Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a basic tote bag using foam instead of interfacing or cotton batting. When you use foam, it's a very sturdy bag. It can pretty much stand up on its own. And this is about a medium sized tote bag, but you can make it any size that you want. Now, if you want to use cotton fabric, I used uh, decorator fabric on the outside and regular quilting fabric on the inside. You can find an inexpensive line of decorator fabric at Joanne Fabrics and Crafts and it's called Home Essentials. You can also use denim or canvas. Okay, let's get started. This is a suggested layout to cut your fabric for the outside of the bag and your lining. So you want to have your fabric folded in half with the selvage edges together. And right in here is where you cut out your larger pieces for the front and back. Then over here, you're going to cut out that strip that's for the gusset. That is the piece that is, goes along the side and along the bottom of the bag. And then you move over and you cut out two strips for your straps. I purchased my foam off of the bolt and it's 20 inches wide this way. So if that's the way you bought it, then here is a suggested layout for it. You're going to cut your really long pieces, your gusset and your straps going the lengthwise of your foam. And then over here, you cut out your two larger pieces. To fuse your fabric on the foam, just follow package instructions. So here's how I did the straps. I took the foam strip and centered it on one edge of the fabric. And I had some fabric left over at the end, each end, and you should. And that's going to be folded over and pressed, and it's about a quarter of an inch. Then you're going to take this other edge and fold it over a quarter of an inch. So this is fused on, and the other three edges are pressed over. So now you're just going to fold this over like this, and then fold it over again so that your fabric looks like this. So this side here comes almost over to this other edge, but not quite. So let me show you the other one that I've done. Here it is. And here is where I've folded, here's that folded edge right here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna stitch along the bottom, then go up this side here all the way to this end, stitch across, and then you're going to stitch all the way back down to where you started. On all three pieces for the outside, you want to take that fabric and fuse it to your foam. Then on each piece that is for the front and back, so you have two of those, down in the lower corners, you're going to take something round, this is about a four inch diameter circle, and draw a line, and then do the same thing over on this side, right here, draw a line. Then either with scissors or a rotary cutter, you're just going to cut right on those lines. You're doing it again on both of your pieces for the outside of the bag, and you'll also do it on your lining pieces. Your foam is, is thick, especially when you're going to stitch several layers together. And it's very difficult to pin it together. And these are clips. You can find these in the Sewing Notions area of Walmart, and then also in Joann's, on the internet, and other fabric stores. And I've used these to clip. So what I've done is I've taken the gusset strip. And by the way, when I do a gusset like this, I've given you a, a, an amount to cut it in inches, but I always cut it just a little bit longer just in case you, have, you didn't cut this piece here exactly like you should have. So I always cut this just a bit, little bit longer. 
Then I have on this edge here, edge here, I have it even with this edge, the top edge. Then I've pinned it down here, or not pinned, clipped. And then you're going to what we call ease it around the corner. And you'll notice here my clips are really close together. And you have to do that in order to get it to lay down correctly. So then I've gone ahead and clipped it. Then I'm going to start over here and I'm going to do a one quarter inch seam all the way around the corner and then up here. And I recommend you use a stitch length of about 3.0 to 3.5. This is really, really thick. Here is the piece that was excess on the gut gusset. So I want to trim this off. So I'm just going to put my ruler up against the top edge there of the foam over here. And I'm just going to trim it off. So when you're done with this first edge, this is what it looks like. When it's time to clip the other side of the bag to the gusset, what I like to do is clip this side first and then go over and clip this side. And then I'll go and clip along the bottom. And you'll find it's much easier to get it all together when you do it that way. So after you've got it all clipped, then you want to go ahead and stitch one quarter inch seam all the way around. This next step will help your corners to look smoother. And so what you want to do is on your curved corners, go in and do little slits. Make sure you don't cut through your stitch line. So you're going to go over on this side, up here, and then of course these two sides. This is the lining and you're going to assemble it the same way that you did the other fabric with foam. For this next step, take your lining and pull it over the end of your ironing board because it's going to be much easier to iron this. So what you're going to do at this top edge, you're going to fold it over a half inch and press and go all the way around. Then fold it over one more time a half inch, press going all the way around. Now insert your lining into the bag and insert the back side of the lining, which is the not so pretty side, against the foam. So here's the pretty side of my lining. Then take those edges that you already pressed over, fold them over the top, and then clip all along there. It's going to make it easier to sew if you turn this now with the lining side the whole bag going out. So I'm going to turn it out and you'll see why when you go to do the next step it's going to be a lot easier. I have a baby lock sewing machine, a baby lock crescendo. So if you have a baby lock you might have this presser foot uh, that goes with your machine. But look in your stash of presser feet no matter which brand you have and look for a foot that has a little opening right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and I'm going to move my needle over this direction. So when then I go to line up the edge of that lining piece, it just lines up really, really easily. So here's how I've positioned my bag in the sewing machine. And I've got my needle over here on this side and the edge of the lining piece is right here. So this is where I want to stitch down. So I'm just going to go ahead and begin stitching. I'm going to remove my first clip because I you can't stitch over clips. And I'm just going to stitch right along there. Now once you start getting to your first side, you're going to have to pull your bag like this and open it up a little more. So you kind of have to use a lot of arm strength when it comes to working with foam like this. And just be patient. So I'm going to lift it up, push the bag up like that so that I can get around it and continue stitching. And so you want to just keep going around, take your time 
when you're doing this because you want to make sure you're not stitching through the other side of your bag. So you want to make sure that other edge is out of the way. I've now turned the bag front side out and this is what the edge should look like when you're done. Last step is to stitch the straps on. So here's where you're going to position them. Where this seam is, you're going to go over two and a half inches. And then from the top edge here, you're going to go down two inches so that the bottom of the strap is two and a half inches down. So just remember, two and a half inches, two and a half inches. Now let me show you the stitch pattern that I did. Here is the top edge of the bag right here, and here's that little band that's from the lining. So you're going to stitch just below this band, and you're just going to stitch across here like this. Then you're going to go down, then across, then back up, and then back across one more time because you want this to be really stable. Then you're going to stitch down this way, stitch back across, stitch up this way. If you have a computerized sewing machine, that'll be, this will be much easier to do if you set your machine to where your needle is down through your fabric every time you stop stitching. So then you can easily turn your bag so that you can do this stitch pattern. So this is what it looks like when the bag is all done. And here's the side, and then here's the other side, and then here's the bottom, so you can see what the bottom looks like. And then I'm going to flip it and show you the lining. Now your lining does not have pockets, but if you want pockets on the inside, I have a separate tutorial that only talks about how to put pockets on the inside of the bag. So you can custom make your pockets. They're not hard to make at all. But just remember this one thing. Your pockets are put on the lining before the bag is assembled. So don't try to do it after your bag is assembled. If you are a beginner and you felt this particular bag was a little too challenging for you, I have other tote bags that you can work on. This is just what I call a flat bag. So the front and the back are basically the same. But in this particular tutorial, if you're interested in learning how to put a snap on it like this, you can also go to this tutorial. The handles are really easy to make because they're put right into your seams. And what's unique about this bag is that I put one of my quilt blocks on the front, but you don't have to do it. You can make the front and back the same. If you want to make a really large tote bag, here's one right here, and it has pockets on the inside, and it just has box corners on the bottom. Here is a bag that I used outdoor fabric to make it. It has a zipper pocket on the front, and I used strapping material, and then it also has a zipper closure at the top. So if you want a zipper closed bag, go to this tutorial. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you've learned something new. Working with foam is a little bit different, a little more challenging, but remember, in all of my tote bags, you can use heavy iron-on interfacing or cotton batting or iron-on fleece if you like, if you don't want to use the foam. If you're interested in other beginner sewing projects, check below your YouTube screen for those video links. And also, if you want to do the pockets on your bag, that link will also be listed below your YouTube screen. So you scroll down to the description section, click on the down arrow to expand it open, and you'll see all of the links there. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share 
to share this video with your friends and make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.